Bonjour, no, and welcome to my podcast, My Way of Thinking, or My What, for short, hosted by me, Lee Greeno, here, live from the Man Cave every week. Hope you're all doing well. I know it's been a bit crappy recently with more lockdown rules, pain in the arse, but we're doing it all for the right reasons. Um, so, yeah, just try and stay positive. It is a, just a nightmare from one day to the next. But look, we're all safe, we're all fit and healthy, hopefully, and that is the main thing. And, and today's uh, podcast should make you realise how lucky you really are. Um, now, my way of thinking is all about us, amazing human beings, all I've started to tell. Uh, those stories can massive verily, 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 is that a word, verily? Hmm, I'll have to look it up. Or very massively is a word, two words. Uh, I always get that wrong. <laughs> but with the guests I'll be interviewing... You'll always be able to take a little bit of advice or insight into how extraordinary we can all be. Now, remember, there's only four rules for the podcast. One, no bullshit. And two, no judging. And three, no negativity. And four, have fun. Now, today I am talking to Ian Ward. Um, Ian Ward is an awesome, awesome guy. Uh, he found out earlier this year that he had brain cancer. Um, and he is so positive about how he deals with it, his outlook on life, um, and just a lovely, fun guy. And he's trying to do something really important with it as well, raise money um, and run in the marathon. Um, but a real humbling podcast, just a lovely guy to speak to and just makes real, makes you realise, you know, we can find positive in everything we do. A uh, real special podcast. Make sure you keep listening in. So here we are, me talking to Ian. Okay, so welcome um, to my way of thinking, and today I have a very special guest. This is the one and only Ian Ward. Welcome, Ian. Ooh. Thanks for having me on. Ooh. Excellent stuff. Thanks so much for coming on, Ian. I know you've got a busy schedule, um, but we have got lots to talk about, and hopefully have a bit of fun on the way. Now, mm. the first thing I always do at the start of my podcast is uh, do a couple of fun, light-hearted stories, shall we say. Because uh, I look at the news in the morning, I think it's pretty depressing. Uh, but there's always some little gems of someone that's either uh, had a little accident or has done something stupid uh, that we can talk about. So, oh, good. Yes. Now, talking about being a bit stupid, well, this this bloke, bless him. Right. Now, uh, a pensioner blew up his own kitchen while trying to kill a fly with an electric bug zapper. <laughs> <laughs> blew it up blew it up the man 80 was trying to reach the buzzing insect but he hadn't planned for the fact that the gas was leaking in the property oh no <laughs> he waved the buzz zapper around which looks like a tennis racket have you seen them yeah yeah i have yeah they're painful if you touch them jesus um yeah, and instead of swatting flies, the hot instrument ignited the gas. The, git the kitchen and part of the roof was destroyed, but the man escaped injury by diving on the floor. Um, he was treated in hospital. This was in... Uh... Sounds like he was a vet. <laughs> he knew what to do. Well, hold on. This is the best bit. So he's treated. This was in France. Uh, an investigating source said, on this occasion, gas was leaking in the man's house. The very hot zapper ignited the gas. The man was lucky to get away by diving on the floor. Uh, and this is the best bit of the story. It says, he's not, allowed, not been allowed to return to the house and he's staying on a local campsite until repairs are carried out. Don't know what that's all about, campsite. You know, you'd think you'd find him an hotel, bless him, because he's 18. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the last line is, it's not known whether the offending fly survived the blast. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine that fly? It must uh, it must. <laughs> It, I bet it is flies. I mean, if he got down fast enough, like, flies are ridiculous for how quickly their reactions are. Yeah. So that fly is probably still alive. Yeah, I reckon it is. It's gonna, he's going to move house, and then it's going to come to that house and haunt him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay. And then the final story which I saw, which I thought was great. So this one is... Uh, Right, a man has been advised to throw his whole girlfriend away after he shared a picture on Reddit of uh, a mildly infuriating uh, how he was when his partner puts her food away when she gets home from the shop. Now, what happens, okay, what she does when she comes home from the shopping, so she gets all the shopping, which I hate shopping. Do you like shopping? 
It doesn't really bother me. Oh, it, I hate it. I'm terrible. I've got a brother-in-law, and what he does, he'll like put the tins in one side, and the but he's very organised. Are you organised, Ian? Uh, when it comes to that, yeah, yeah, oh, with the food. I just can't. I can't do it. Um, so what she did? But it becomes habit once you started it. It then becomes where are the bananas? Where do they go? And it's like, well, they go there, and they only go there. They yes. don't go anywhere else. Otherwise, it's just wrong. We are not, It'd be like I'm shitting in the sink. It's like, well, it, it doesn't go there, does it? <laughs> I do. I do know what you're saying within reason, but it gets to a point when I, I've done the shopping. I come home, no one's around, and I'm having to put the in the cupboards, and I'm just thinking, fuck it, and I'll just put it anywhere. But I try, <laughs> I, I try not to. And this woman basically got the bags with the shopping and just put them straight in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> How good's that? <laughs> Oh, bless her. And uh, people have seen the pictures of it. It's basically just the bags in the fridge. Now, what amazes me about this, she must have cleared that shelf. <laughs> so, you know, she's too lazy to take the stuff out of the bags, but she's she's got the oomph to empty the shelf. It's just Was amazing. this like a, a display of like, you know, you're not the dominant one, like I'm taking control? Is that... Is that... <laughs> yeah, it could be, mate. It could, and uh, people at 2,500 comments, they've said there's no other way. You have to throw the whole girlfriend away. Uh, <laughs> this is an absolute deal breaker. <laughs> and there's people, what makes me laugh about social media is people will really get angry about this. Someone said, uh, oh, yeah. how can a single picture make me so angry? Laziness has reached a whole new level. I love that. I, I know. Ex I, the, I sent this a similar thing to uh, one of my friends the other day where it was like the re a recording of these lads and they have, um, they have a knife and they're clearly at like an outrageous session of a gaff party. Yeah. And this lad, I think they were Kiwi boys. Yeah. They do a drop kick on the knife and Ooh. the knife sticks oh. in the top of the man's foot for a second or two. <laughs> and it's just it's it's a big you, that's the exact reaction when you see it like oh yeah 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 it, it's not so bad but like it is solid in his foot for a second or two and then flops out so it's not like it's the worst and then of course the comments are like you know what an idiot like you know what a dumb bastard what did he think was gonna happen yeah. but like the the top comment had comments within itself and i was like i wonder what people are saying here and like it was because it was like 400 comments to the first comment. Yeah. So it was like, that's bizarre. What's yeah. going on here? And it was a debate about like the difference between the millennials and like the greatest generation. And it was like so political. I was like, lads, this is, a, this is a, um, an Instagram page for people who just like fucking with people. And like, this has yeah. gotten so political so yeah. quickly. Yeah. Because the thing is, Pete, these high and mighty people make me laugh because, you know, I could have easily ended up doing something like that when I was pissed up in 18. We could have all, you know what I mean? It's just part I of... I did it. stuff like that. Yeah, I did worse than that. I don't want to say, but... <laughs> yeah. But that's part of growing up, ain't it? You mate, you do silly mistakes. He won't do it again. <laughs> yeah. Learn from your scars. I've got, like, burns on my chest from oh. when I was in... Um... Yeah on tour with the rugby team and they're oh. like oh this is your first tour where you get one bird and then next year you get another one right beside it so it acts like you know the uh, the sergeant stripe things in the yeah. military or whatever i yeah. like they're only little things but it's like if i look i probably would do it again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i was lucky thank god i never did rugby i did football and they were quite bad but Rugby's another level, isn't it? Rugby boys are another I level. I found that, like, the, the, we, we always hung around with, like, all the boys that were fun, and we hung around with the football crew in our, um, in our university. It was really small. It was fucking yeah. brilliant, brilliant yeah. university. Yeah. But, like, it, it was different sorts of, like, depravity. So, like, <laughs> our boys would do a certain kind of thing, and then the football lads would do a different kind of thing. Yeah. But, like, either way, you'd be, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Doing this yeah. if you were on yeah. either team at one point. Yeah, and it makes me laugh because like the footballers are looking at the rugby lads, and go, "Oh, we'd never do that." And then the rugby lads are looking at the football lads, going, yeah. "We'd never do that." <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're mad at each other, aren't you? 
<laughs> oh, of course, yeah, absolutely. All like grouped teams do the exact same thing. There's a hazing. There's some terrible drinking game that just leads to people getting sick, and it's no skill at all. It's just like, ah, uh, you you drop the pen, you drink, you know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, then you've got women looking at us and like, oh, idiots. <laughs> Not if they're in a team, though. If they're on the volleyball team, they're doing the exact same exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They just wear makeup. That's any difference. Well, mind you, <laughs> saying that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we digress. Right, so there are a couple of cracking stories anyway. So let's talk about you, Ian. So growing up, obviously, you grew mm-hmm. up in Ireland. Tell us a little bit about growing up and whereabouts in Ireland you, you grew up. So I grew up in uh, North Dublin in a place called uh, Clontarf and uh, like similar to the rugby thing it's it wouldn't be the biggest rugby place in the world but some some decent players came out of that um came out of that suburb Keen Healy he uh, he's our prop and he's, he came out of there and uh, the Clontarf rugby club is was a you know it's not like the center point of the whole yeah. the whole uh, place but like that's the kind of place that would uh a lot of people who are into rugby would have connections to and then there's like a, a few schools and their ri- rival schools yeah. in terms of sports but like everyone has mates from the different schools as well so you uh it was it was a great place to grow up like people got along with each other brilliantly i had a great childhood i enjoyed high school no one bullied anyone that seemed like it was a uh, an exclusively thing for like large schools yeah, and yeah. I experienced nothing of it. There were gay lads in the school. None of them got bullied, like all sorts of shit like that. That you'd oh. think people got picked on yeah. when they were, um, uh, when they were young. And then, but like Dublin, you do end up doing the same things over and over again. Yeah. So then I, uh, around early twenties, I moved to, moved to London also because there was a recession at the time and it was difficult to get work. Oh, so right, I okay. thought need to need to redo go back into university again. Yeah. And um, I was looking around and I found that the NHS paid you or not paid you paid for the uh, education if you uh, did it over here. So I was like, ah, you know what? It's time to it's time to do something different. So yeah, yeah. Over I came. What was what was that NHS? What we what we, what job was it? So I studied paramedic science over in Ireland, and um, not, not like the the full big thing. This only took a year and a half, and it, you end up being. Um, I think you guys know them as ambulance techs, where yeah. you're 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 driving, but you also know enough. You have enough medical knowledge to uh, help out the uh, the main paramedic when they're doing whatever. Yeah. All of it left my brain almost instantly after I stopped studying it, which is a big loss because it's it's a handy skill to know. Yeah. But um, I I went to, into nursing over here because I thought very incorrectly that like ah paramedics science nursing surely it's not that different and it really is. <laughs> you have you have entire autonomy as a paramedic the situation is all up to you which involves a great deal of pressure but it also means there's obviously loads of paperwork but nothing compared to nursing nursing you are just scribbling on pages his shit was this big it was this shape blah 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 uh onto the next thing and you still have to mention your shit uh documentation on this but in a more concise way yeah and it's just like can we not just at least have one big sheet rather than seven different ones? Yeah. But that's the way it's done. And that, that just wrecked my head and I yeah. had, had to quit. Yeah. I suppose paramedic is more front line, is it? You're reacting to a situation, dealing with it, and then handing it off to nurses and doctors. And you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. you get in there, stuck in there, but then you, you're always handing off your work your your work so to speak yeah yeah you do the best you can and then that's it you're you're out yeah yeah and i suppose being a paramedic as well you've got to be a certain type of person to deal with that because you know you can come you can come away feeling elated you've saved somebody's life and then you can come away feeling quite beaten up that you've lost somebody you know what i mean oh yeah yeah my met like i uh, i had loads of friends who are um 
uh, doing similar things. And one of them actually ended up moving over to London with me as well. And, you know, his friends became my friends. So I knew loads of uh, paramedics. And, like, if ever... The, the irony of doctors and nurses and paramedics is that, like, they are the biggest drug and cigarette and booze fiends you'll ever come across because they just need some sort of a cognitive break so it's like all right give me the powder (laughs) 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 they're mad for it yeah well we won't say any more on that i wonder what (laughs) the uh police establishment are like as well (laughs) but no i mean i mean yeah i mean dealing with that all day it must you know there's so much pressure and stress on your mind it does make yeah. you think, you know, these people, these like families that break up, that are in the police force, it must be so difficult going home when you've dealt with stuff like that all day. Yeah. And then it's that whole case of that, you you know, you go home and then you end up taking it out on your, your family a little bit, which then adds to the, the cycle of now you, because you've taken it, you've ended it out on your family in some ways that they're pissed off with you and then it's like it, when is there a point where someone gets you know just a free break so i'd say it's an incredibly difficult job to yeah. to balance definitely and i think when we had this lockdown and we were clapping for them they definitely they all deserve a bloody pay rise don't they but whether they ever get it is uh, who knows <laughs> Yeah, I always found that clapping thing cringy because it's like, oh, fuck off, all of you. You're just doing it because everyone, else, all your other neighbours are there. If yeah, someone was standing in Charity Drive, you'd be like, oh, well, uh, I can't find the bike. Yeah, car. yeah, it was, it was, it was strange. You know, you get the people coming out really go, woo, you know, and um, but yeah, it was, it was a strange. But I mean like you say we shouldn't have to clap for them you know you know we know what a brilliant job they do you would all need to clap outside the house for them but but anyway so so that didn't work out you thought can't can't stick with this what did you do then uh, then i moved on to uh sports sports science and uh that went well and i started working in fitness uh, stuff afterwards and that was definitely it, it took um i did computer game development quit after a month after I realized how hard that really is. No creativity, you just program, program, program. And it's like, yeah. I wasn't even that into computing. So like knowledgeable in computing, I should say. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, this was a mistake. And then, um, then I did paramedic science, graduated in that, but didn't get the job. And also because I had taken so long doing the NHS stuff, my old uh, certificate became uh, expired. So I was like, oh. all right, well, I may as well go somewhere else. <laughs> and then I went on and did sports science and then started a, a fitness career, which I'm hoping to, once the, once the chemo and the um, radiotherapy is done, I'm hoping to get back to work. So Yeah, cool. So, so you've started that, you di- you're doing that. Is this when you first get diagnosed or first... You know what I mean? Is this where you start having problems when you're actually in that in that line of work? Never had any problems. That was that's what makes okay. the the whole like um, I keep telling people that I'm the the luckiest unlucky man in the world, and it's because I didn't have any symptoms, yeah. still don't, and I was I always did medical trials just because they're really handy ways to make uh, a load of money. So it'd be the kind of thing where you go, you do like a, a long weekend in a, a hospital and it's a hospital that has like a PlayStation 4 and yeah. a pool yeah. table and you meet some cool people there from time to time. And um, so you do that for a weekend and then it's like, all right, here's enough money for you to go to Peru. Uh, here's <laughs> enough money. I w- like that was, that was one thing I did with my money once. Yeah. Um, uh, like all sorts of like once you have that sort of big mountain of cash like it gives you really good options for getting some yeah, yeah. very excellent experiences into your life in some yeah. way yeah it's funny you say that you know i was talking today at work to someone about it um because we've got this covid test now and they're saying you know we'll give you covid and we'll try and work out a vaccine and she, and she was like well why would you do that and i said you know some people it's good money i've known filmmakers 
that have funded their films by doing, you know, these tests. It, it, you know, mm. and it, is, it is good money. They're not, you know, they're, they're not going to try and kill you. Um, well, you hope not. So, yeah. uh, so I totally understand that. So what, what led to the diagnosis then? Um, yeah, so I went in. This was like maybe my fifth, possibly even my sixth trial. And the one that I had done beforehand was something to do with sleep. It leaves me a little bit now, but it was uh, to test uh, how you would sleep after taking this um, medication. And they actually had something that looked like a scrum cap with these little nodes. And I'd put the scrum cap on. I really should get a, a, a photo of this so I can just go bing and show people. But, um, I had these, uh, these little nodes in. And so they were measuring my brain waves. And it still wasn't detected that I had this tumor. And then three months later, which is the minimum time uh, you can wait until you do another trial, it coincided that I had shifts canceled in work that I, 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 I wanted to, to do. And they emailed me being like, oh, your three months are done. And um, would you like to do another trial? And I was like, oh. I was really pissed off that I'm down of work that I had planned. Yeah. And I'd cancelled, you know, other invitations to do fun, fun stuff yeah. on the weekend. And then they came in. So I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'd love to do a, another trial. <clears throat> so they said, all right, cool. Uh, it's, it's for uh, uh, medications to do with your brain. So the first thing that is, I think it was a, a schizophrenia medication they were testing. And um, it, it was a sweet one because they were saying, and um, what we predict will happen from these drugs is that because you don't have schizophrenia, you won't actually change in any like way. You won't have you any won't. feelings. So, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, all right, well, uh, this, this is going to be a handy, handy bit of cash for me. Sit around, wait around, play a PlayStation, play some pool. And then, all right, here's your five grand. Off you go. Yeah. And then, uh, but they always test like their rigorous testing uh, to make sure that you're as healthy as yeah. possible. Yeah. And they went in. And so because it was to do with the brain, they gave me a brain scan and then an MRI. And they were like, Oh, you, you've got a tumor, man. You got, a, uh, it's benign. It, it looks benign. So I wouldn't worry about it, but, um, your life, you need to, uh, pay attention to this thing. So, I, I was a little bit bummed out, but like, it wasn't depressing because it was like, yeah, like later in your life, it's not, it's not threatening in any way. Now you need to uh, make yeah. sure that it doesn't grow. So you'll be doing regular appointments, but you won't get anything until later in life. And you'll get uh, you'll get seizures every so often. So once you start having seizures, you probably won't be able to drive anymore. And you, uh, there's a, there's a lot of careers that you, you can't do. Um, at the time, what annoyed me the most was that I couldn't get into the, the army reserves oh, right. because, um, I, uh, coincidentally enough, someone who was doing the medical trials told me about how he was in the, in the reserves and all he did was like adventures. So it was just hiking up mountains, uh, sailing boats and being a dog handler and doing yeah. some security <laughs> stuff. But like nothing like going to war, even close to it. <laughs> and yeah. it, and it's like, and you get Holland. They pay you to take <laughs> sailing trips and go scuba diving. And he's like, yeah, because technically I'm learning skills that could be useful for the army. And it's like, but, but like people pay money to do that. He's like, yeah, you should sign up. And I was like, oh, but I'd be worried, like, um. Aren't tensions increase, increasing in Iran at the moment? Like, I don't want to go to a war. That I like. <laughs> you want? I don't want to go to a war. war. And then, what if I don't fully believe in the cause? <laughs> like, fight the Nazis. Fair enough, I can do that. But like, you know, fight the Vietnamese. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he then said, "Well, in the reserves, you can say no." All right. They can. can't. They get. They say like, "Will you go to war?" And you can just go, no. <laughs> okay. You sure? I swear to God, I looked it up. I was like, I was not going to sign up to join the Army Reserves unless I knew for a fact that I was not going to be like, you know, right, off you go out to Afghanistan. Try not to stand on mines. <laughs> and, 
But yeah, that's what they said. And so I was like, all right, yeah, I'll sign up to that. And then because I had the, uh, the potential for seizures, I mean, straight away you can see, all right, army medic, no, we don't, we don't need a medic who might end up needing a medic. So. <laughs> yeah. So none of that. So that was the thing that really bummed me out the most. Yeah. Um, oh, your sound just up. gone up. Oh, that's sorry. Your sound went off for a what second. Your sound went off for a second. It's fine. Ah, all right. Um, the, the COVID thing kind of messed up uh, when my second appointment was going to be because it – like I said, the first scan it was uh, it was seemed to be benign, so they wouldn't. Um, it wasn't like you're on the emergency list. You need to get in. You need to get this sorted. So when COVID started happening, they put me like low down on the priority list, and rightfully so. Yeah. And then so it took a while, but the next time I went in, once they kind of got a handle on um, COVID a little more. Uh, they did a second scan and then they saw, oh, like we were wrong with the first thing. This is actually growing. And because it's already growing, it had, uh, it had grown by 30% because it's like a ball. So yeah. if it's like this and then it's like that, it doesn't look much bigger, but it is a yeah. lot bigger because yeah. of the, the mass. Yeah. And then uh, the doctor, he explained everything and he was like, all right, here's the benefits if you don't do it, which there are none. Here are the benefits <laughs> if you do. Yeah. <laughs> if you do go in for the surgery. Oh, wait, there was, there was one or two. There was um, uh, the, the part of the brain that it affects me because I'm right handed is speech and sight. So straight away, anyone who says like, you know, your, your speech and your sight could be damaged is going to go, uh, yeah. are there other options? I like <laughs> yeah. those two things. Any tablets? And the, yeah, 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 exactly. Here's some green tea. Drink a lot of it. And um, he was saying, yeah, you cannot do the surgery and you can go straight to chemo and radiotherapy. But um, what we can do is if we have awake surgery, I can take as much of your brain away that has the tumor that's not going to or do very little damage to your speech. And this guy is a pioneer of yeah. brain surgery. Yeah. He's an absolute wizard. Yeah. He's a, his name is a Tim Jones, which I always like because it sounds like Tom Jones. <laughs> and and yeah. uh, so he was like, really, he was a cool guy as well, bonded with him straight away, trusted him. So it's like, right, yep, yeah, Tim, you're the surgeon, you know about this, uh, go for it. And he was like, right, the best way to do it is this, 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 and this. And he named like three hard things. I was like, oh, fuck, what if you say that's the best way? Then <laughs> let's do that. Yeah. So um, the, surgery, it, the surgery was horrible, but like it ended and it wasn't uh, bad afterwards. And my so, so just going back, so you've had that. Yep. Uh, so from when they found it and they said it wasn't too bad, then all of a sudden the next minute is you've got to go and have surgery while you're awake. How yeah. did you deal with it? Did you find that you were just on autopilot or were you very depressed? or did you? Because you seem like a guy that just gets on with things and just cracks on. Is that how you dealt with it initially or...? Yeah, like at the time it was obviously very shocking, but by the end of the meeting it was because he started explaining everything, it was like, all right, I'm not really in I'm not in the ether anymore. There is an issue. There's lots of uh things to know about it. Um, but I I know them. So Yeah. The, the instantly the issue with me is like, fuck, do I tell my parents? Do oh. I not tell my parents? Yeah. How do I yeah. do it? How do I like do I tell everybody about it? Do I tell oh. some people about it? I'm gonna have a big scar. Like I don't like in a way it's kind of a dick move that you didn't tell your friends where it's like, Oh yeah, I went in for brain surgery. But then also I don't want loads of people being like, yeah. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Like, go away. Yeah, I, I I I do understand that because you know, there's times when you you've got enough to deal with on your own and you do and, and it's great that you are selfishly thinking you know, the hassle, the hassle you put onto everyone else. And the other thing is they want, it, it makes them feel like they want to try and help, which is yeah. intuitive because you're like, you can't help. I've got the best doctor. He can help. 
you know what I mean? It's I suppose it yeah. was strange for you. Austra- like straight away, my dad is a great example of this. Yeah. Um, like he he really wanted to come to loads of the meetings, and I was like, ah, oh. like how's the how's the polite way for me to say no? Don't come to the meetings. <laughs> you will irritate me. Yeah. But but like I was like, all right, look, he's going through shit as well. Like, don't be a dick. Have your dad come to some of the meetings yeah. if he really wants to. But he um, so we had a nurse in, and he starts asking these ridiculous questions that don't need to be asked <laughs> about uh, so chemotherapy, radiotherapy. That's what my prescription or my plan was. That yeah. it, again was an option. It was a choice. I you did it or I didn't. And he started asking about this like bizarre medical trial that was done with this thing that was you got to do this before you do radio and chemotherapy and it was like an american study and then the first um neurological nurse said okay well i mean you could do that but you'd have to pay to do it and when you're doing it your son could get a placebo because they have to give placebos yeah and then because you'd be in the american medical system you yeah. would then have to pay like millions but also this is a medical trial and i know one person was really successful in it but you got to remember that chemotherapy and radiotherapy has been around for decades yeah, yeah, it yeah. is the gold standard it's the best there's tons of research it works yeah. and then most people wouldn't need to ask that they'd be able to figure that one out themselves but yeah. he was like okay yeah i understand that and he has a, chem- a, a, a master's in chemistry so he yeah. should know about science yeah and yeah. then um the the doctor and then the consultant doctor had, so three separate meetings and he asked the same question to all of them, <laughs> yeah. all of them every yeah. single one i don't know i know it's just because he cares and i think as well because the world is turning so fast. You look on news, I saw something, because obviously I was going to speak to you, I just had a quick look at things, and someone's had brain surgery with a robot. A robot did it. And you just think, there's that, yeah, it's crazy. And you, yeah, I mean, it's like the world's turning that fast. You know, people are on about different medicines, uh, you know, robots, and you just think, so some people just want to ask everything, but the reality is, like you said, it's been around for a long time. It's proven. You've got one of the best doctors. Sometimes you have to sort of forget about all the nonsense that's going on and, and, and go yeah. with, you know what I mean? Well, I'm very glad that uh, I, I did just take the, the road that was most trodden because it's just like, all right, well, it's going to be more predictable what will happen yeah. rather than, like, yeah. oh, have the bluebell, put it in the thing, <laughs> stir it up. You know. and the thing is as well, it's the stress as well. You know, it, it couldn't help going to America, having the stress of that. You know, Gosh. that can't help. Yeah, definitely. Not with that lunatic in office and the amount of crap that's going on <laughs> over there. It is red hot. It's absolutely yeah. red hot. Yeah. Okay, so we get to the brain surgery. Now, you said it was horrible. This is... Oh, yeah. you know, now, I remember um, reading about this woman that uh, could play the violin. She did it for a living, done it for 30, 40 years. And they said, right, well, we need to do surgery. I think it was similar to what you had and a tumour. Um, yep. And so they, what they said is, play the violin while we do the brain surgery and we can see if we affect how you, pl- so we can, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And that is just amazing. Did, did, how, how, how did that go? I mean, it's like out of this world, isn't it? You just think, how can that happen? Because that's the section of the brain that is affected. So uh, they, they'd probably be operating on something that is not to do with um, musical dexterity. So that would be, I'm assuming, a different part of the brain. So mine was speech, yeah. which is... Um, which Tim said is the is is uh, unlucky in some ways because it means uh, if you're doing the violin or the piano or whatever, if you're a musician, yeah, they can act. They can you do awake surgery anyway, but they can put you under for the first bit where they actually open up right, your head. Right. But if you have speech therapy to go through, Tim was saying to me, "All right, we can do it, but as you come out, you'll be groggy." Yeah. So 
your baseline tests with speech and language that you did won't be accurate to how you're uh, coming yeah. out. So yeah. you'll still be slower, which is what we need to tell the difference from. So it's like, ah, oh, shit. Okay. Can't win, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll do that. But there were loads of benefits that um, yeah. I haven't mentioned. One of them being the positioning of my scar and my hair loss is not bad at all like the you see it there like that's the oh, radiotherapy well i mean i'm not being funny <laughs> <laughs> but there nothing. you go like some lads some lads get it like just here and yeah. it's like all right well you're bald now because you, you can't just have like this one area here you, the rest of your head will be a frame so yeah at least yeah. i can still sort of do something with this and if yeah. you know if it Ends up looking stupid after a while. Like, it, no, looks, it looks all right, actually. The little thicker Mohican. I think you should have it thinner. Yeah. Have it thinner. <laughs> Go for and it. It does need to get thinner, yeah. This is just because I can't... Um, I shaved it off with one of my mates. And I just haven't gone up to see her to get it reshaved again. But I am going to get like that. Or, you, yeah, what you could do. Because don't they have it like that in Peaky Blinders? You know what I mean? Where it's a bit longer and then they grease it back. They have it like that in Peaky Oh, no. <laughs> could, no, no way. No way. Couldn't do that. Uh, I used to have really long hair. And so every so often I would like slick it back like that. Ugh, no, it looks yeah, bad on me. Yeah. Anyway, so you've had the brain surgery. You've you've mm-hmm. come out the other. You've come out the other side. So... How did it go? Did they say it was successful? Do you, you know, because obviously you said you've got to carry on with chemo and things like that. What, what happened then? Uh, uh, sorry, what do you want me to say? How, uh, why, did it, why was the surgery successful? You, well, after you come out of surgery, obviously, I would, I would, you know, what did they say to you next? Because obviously you're wondering how did it go? And... Yeah. So instantly, uh, the surgery went really well. Uh, like uh, from, you know, hour one, hour two, and so on. And uh, the first day, I could speak absolutely fine. And my face looked uh, fairly normal. Um, it took a couple of days, and then the swelling started to happen. So I had this, like, half balloon head. Like, I kept, I kept sending videos to people where I was like, all right, here's, uh, here's Dr. Jekyll, and here's <laughs> Mr. Hyde. And, like, you know, just kept doing that over and over again here's the goodyear blimp here's the hindenburg was it painful uh, you know was it painful or did it was it really sore or or did it just recover on its own quite well after after the surgery uh, there was i got some uh, pretty pounding headaches but then they gave yeah. me some pretty decent painkillers and it yeah. wasn't really much of them what was it or morph they gave me that and that uh it tastes like sweets which is kind of weird morphine, but it's morphine isn't it yeah yeah it's Ooh. oral morphine i yeah. think that's what it, it might be some other you know yeah. um yeah. uh pharmaceutical reason that it's called oro but i they put it in your mouth anyway and uh that yeah that was quite good because that doesn't make you um like a zombie yeah you can yeah. still you know, hold a conversation and uh, play around on your computer if you want and yeah, yeah. do all that sort of jazz. Yeah. And then afterwards, they gave me um, uh, a, some, some derivative of codeine. I can't remember what it's called. And they said, all right, you can take three of these tablets a day. And on my worst day, I took two. Right. So oh, it never, well, really, okay. never really got that bad. Okay, cool. So then, what? So then, what happens? Then, then I guess they call you in once everything's calmed down, you know, and and they can look at results and things like that. What happened then? Yeah. So um, this it was a it was fairly big U turn because they told me your speech and language will be uh, up and down, like increasing, but it will, like day to day it will go up and down like that, um, and that will take six to uh, six months to to a year until you're back to uh, as as close to 100% as you can go and within six days I was pretty much as sharp in terms of speech as I ever was so it's like well that's that's a pretty big result yeah, yeah. and then when they came in they said it's it's a uh, it's brilliant news to hear that you're um your recovery has happened in speech so so well because it's an indicator of um yeah i should have mentioned that 
the the whole fact that I got this discovered by chance is yeah. first of all extremely rare for the amount of people my age who who get brain tumors. Yeah, that's you know let's say that's uh, one in a thousand. But within that one in a thousand, people who get it detected without symptoms is a further like one in yeah. ten thousand. Like it's even rarer. And so they were saying, all right, well. It's, it never happens that we do these surgeries before the tumor is already at a stage where it's yeah. damaging your brain. Yeah. So what we have on paper is from people who are literally twice your age. Right, okay. So the six months to a year recovery on your speech, it, like that's what we predicted. And your brain, because it has something called uh, plasticity when you're younger, yeah. Um, it has a much larger effect on things. So we don't know how long they, I, I asked about uh, my, my life expectancy when they started saying, all right, yeah, it's a stage three. We didn't think it was a stage three. We thought it was a stage one. Uh, and then started going through the treatment that they need to do. It's like, we need to do a uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy straight away. It needs to be aggressive as aggressive as it can be with brain cancer, yeah. which is actually not an aggressive form of chemo or radiotherapy because if you have it on the lungs, then you know you can survive one lung, and yeah. your lung has a, a, a form of repair rate. So they just get the fucking bazooka of lasers <laughs> and absolutely <laughs> blast you with yeah, as hard yeah, as yeah. they can because yeah. they want to make sure they get the cancer and yeah. destroy it. But they can't do that yeah. in um, in uh, in your brain because it would destroy your brain. Yeah. So they have to like really target it and like kind of prick it with a little yeah. pin as much as possible yeah yeah so uh, benefits it means that i'm currently on chemotherapy and it's not that bad okay. and then the downsides of that is that there's a there is no cure for brain cancer so there's never any sort of oh we got through it yeah, yeah. now yeah. we gotta like be a remission but nothing else it's just always like all they can do is slow it down yeah, yeah. So yeah. they um they said you got the stage three and on paper it's one to six years. And so I was like, Well, fuck, that's that's a lot worse than not being able to speak as quickly as I could. Yeah. And then um but then they were then saying, But you're also in unknown territory. So we don't know how much the plasticity of your brain and just your general youth and your health will affect that. Yeah. probably will but we don't know because there's no research so it was like plan for six years and anything after that you're on bought time as it were so i you, like it's it's shit in some ways but then in all, it's also like all right well it's not not what everyone is operating on anyway the unknown age yeah. of their death it's like yeah. mine's going to be a bit younger than normal but knowing that means that I can make better, better plans because it's like, all right, family, probably not the best uh, plan to go with. But yeah. if you go in with an acceptance of that's not the wisest choice, you can then start making other wise choices that will, you know, give your, um, give your existence meaning. And that's why I started the, uh, the charity thing. It was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> leave behind a, a like a legacy in some sort of a way that's you know not a lot of yeah screaming children yeah and i suppose the other thing is as well it's a good way of dealing with it is you know trying to do something that's like i say going to be give you a bit of a legacy going to make a difference um and keep you because i, th I, was, I mean you know you know i've never dealt I, I had to deal with 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 cancer um but i suppose you don't want the cancer to win. You know what I mean? Because it's such a talking... Oh, yeah. You want to talk about it. You want to talk about it and make an absolute good out of it. I suppose the worst thing you could do is just, you know, think, oh, no, what am I going to do? I mean, the, I suppose, you know, you've got people that are having treatments after treatments after treatments and still struggling. And uh, uh, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand it from your point of view. You, very, you seem very switched on and very, you know, fuck this. Uh, I'm going to deal with it and, and, and crack on. I've been thinking about that a lot. I think everyone has the same attitude. I think it's a, like a bit of a myth that uh, 
uh, people like get really upset and don't live their lives and like have the rest of their lives terrible. I never like I knew loads of people that got cancer and died from it. And every single one of them was then like, all right, well, better get the bucket list out and actually start ticking some of these off. So it seems yeah. to me that um, it's, it's an idea that most people have where it was like, fuck, I think I'd fall apart if that thing happened to me. And then when it actually happens and they're like, all right, well, I'm not going to be the one where that shit happens to, that only happens to, to losers, yeah. they fall apart. I can have, I can have fun. I'm going to go out and have fun. Fuck yeah. that. And I think yeah. everybody actually has the same reaction. Yeah. Do you think people. that's, yeah. Do you think that's just part of the human condition? Do you think that we can do, you know, we can just, we, we, we and I think some people may not feel that, but it's, it's surprising what you can do as a human when pushed to the, to the brink. Oh yeah, like think about the amount of people like uh, like when the world wars broke out where it's like, yeah. yeah, who wants to sign up? And it's like, everyone fucking did. Everybody did it. You had people who were saying like, come on, come on. And like, no, you've got like a medical condition. You've got, a, you're asthmatic. You can't, you can't go to war. Yeah. And they're like, but all my friends are. I'm like, I want to go yeah. and serve too. Yeah. Like, I think hey, it's not fun out there. You know that, right? Yeah, I think I think that's something we're missing a little bit today is that we've lost that over time, that camaraderie. And, you know, if there was a war today, you think, would everyone come together like they did back then? Because they had to. And I suppose they would, but it just... It just makes you think this day and age, this day and age, I think everyone's got it a little... People, some people have got it a little bit too easy. And, you know what I mean? Back then, I, I do worry, I think, you know, have we lost that? In some ways, yeah. I think a lot of it also has to do with because everyone has access to so much more information now that it, you, you enter into like, okay, well, uh, all right, let's think about the war in Iraq and how it was sparred by uh, the 9-11 the bombings. And then when people start digging about it later on, it was like, wait a minute. It's like, why did we end up in Iraq? I thought that was based off someone who was in Afghanistan. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, they go over and it's like, oh, it's all about weapons of mass destruction. It's like, no. And the, the, the war goes on so and then it becomes things to do with like well it was clearly about uh, total control over the oil fields and similar things were going over into uh, the afghan war where it's like like the, the the british soldiers now it's like loads of them are garden poppy fields and it's yeah. like so that the that people can have an influence on uh, getting poppies, which are used for uh, pharmaceutical drugs and then it's just like why why are we over here like putting our lives on the line yeah. for pharmaceutical companies to benefit from it. So I think that's what sort of today when a war breaks out, people are just much more skeptical. Yeah. But like, you know, you look it's, at 1933, it's like, all right, they're, they're killing Jews for no reason. And yeah. they're taking over all of Europe. It's like, all right, well, that's a pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. Simple, yeah. And they're going to bomb you unless you attack them. So yeah. yeah all right. Fair enough. Where do yeah. I sign up to the RAF? Yeah, you're right. I think we've. I think well, there's a few things that have, have changed, and now because we don't trust the politicians or politics as much as we used to, uh, yeah. and because we know so much, I think that doesn't help. Like you say, back in the day, it was like this is our prime minister. We trust him. He might be wrong, but who knows? And what he says goes. Whereas now, you know, Boris is getting a lot of stick with COVID at the minute, ain't he? I'm like, you know. You know, you get people saying, oh, he's a tosser and he don't know what he's on about. People supporting him. And you're just like, yeah, yeah. everything's just so political, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway, we won't talk about politics because this show's way too much fun for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ian, Nen, so you've, you've found out all this. You've been through all this. Now you're going to make a difference. You're going to try and uh, do a world record. Tell us all about this because I've, I've, I've read about it. But Yeah, so uh, originally when I was, um, uh, when I got out of the surgery and my speech was, uh, was, was, uh, was decent and it was like very much on the recovery. I was getting better every day, very noticeable. I was like, uh, I, ha I was running a YouTube channel about gaming. And uh, so I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to, I want to start getting back into my, my gaming thing as soon as possible. It's, it's a surprisingly large amount of work. I'm sure you're aware of it as well, running your yeah. own podcast. It looks, all these things look way simpler than they are. Yeah. And, um, 
so I was going back and I was like, same sort of thing with like, here, my mates are going to see the scar. They're going to ask. So I was like, all right, well, you know, you better address the fact that you have a scar. You might as well find a way to make a bit of fun about it. The Macmillan Cancer Society was, um, was giving me money simply because it's like, here's, you're going through treatment. Here's extra money for whatever you might need it for. Now, because I was uh, like perfectly healthy and able to do things, that was essentially just like beer money, which I didn't spend on beer, but like loads of the equipment that I'm using to um, to start up this charitable fund was sort of funded by a different charity service. So it's yeah. kind of like a, hopefully it's going to, well, actually already it has ended up being self, um, self-propelling cycle because I've definitely raised way more money than has been uh, funneled into me. Yeah. But it was, uh, uh, I had made a plan that just, I was going to do a thing where it was like, uh, uh, do you know the game Warzone? Yes, I do. I'm not a massive gamer. I'll admit that now. All uh, right. But yes, I know. I know. I have heard of Warzone. Yeah. You don't need to know anything about it to get this concept. Yeah. So I was then saying, like, to get a headshot in the game is very hard. You got to be really accurate. It's very <laughs> difficult. It's difficult to even get a kill. It's yeah. such a hard game. Yeah. It makes it so fun. And so I was saying, all right, I'm like, I'm not a, a very good gamer at all. I can handle myself, but like, the way I was sort of pushing the uh, the reason to watch my channel was there. Uh, I, I was trying to look at unique ways that I could do gaming and I could try to make people laugh a bit. And that was my, you know, what is it? Unique selling point. And so I was saying, all right, every time I get a headshot, because I've already got a headshot of my own, you've got to give like one pound, one dollar, one euro yeah, yeah. for every time. And then um, hopefully I would get like, uh, my plan was to maybe do live streams yeah. And then where people are able to talk and uh, speak. And then so it becomes like a big sort of a, like a little fun moment for everyone involved. Being like, hey, headshot, you got to give to charity now. That's the Yeah, rest. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I already had the idea in my head to uh, uh, turn my channel into some sort of a, um, a giving back scheme. And then once I got the, the whole one to six years thing, it's stage three, not stage one. It was like, all right, well, fuck. If that's been, you know, cranked up to 11, I need to do the same thing with the charity. Yeah. So I started thinking, um, what will be ways to do that? Um, doing more events would be similar. So like that whole streaming thing with the headshots, that was like, I do this on a Friday. I try to get headshots and you pay when you, uh, <laughs> you pay, pay when I get them. So I was like, all right, well, what other things could I do? I suppose doing some sort of an athletic uh, feat would be interesting for someone being like, all right, a guy with a terminal disease climbs, you know, Everest or something. And so I was like looking on the, um, uh, I think I looked on the Guinness Book of World Records and I was seeing like, I wonder, could I try and, because loads of those records you can get. Yeah. They're just kind of silly things. Yeah. And so I came across the one on the, uh, the marathon because I know, I knew that you could break a world record if you dressed like something. Right. An almost endless amount of them. It's a great scheme that they have because it's like everyone can have their own silly marathon running record by just yeah. dressing like I dress like a peanut. I dress like, you know, yeah. a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, you can yeah. if you were the first person to do it, Guinness are like, Yep. <laughs> off you go. Happy dies. Yeah. I'd love to know if there's one for a uh, fastest marathon dressed as a pint of Guinness. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna write it, that down. I'm yeah. gonna do that one. Yeah, I know what you mean. The the Guinness Book of Records because uh, I always used to get. Well, we always get it. My son, even though he's 18 now, it really annoys him. But we get it him every Christmas, and he thought, yeah. oh, you know, I'm too old for that shit. And th and every time when I've had a few beers, I'm like looking through. I'm like, I wish I could come up with something. You know, yeah. picking up picking up sweet corn with a toothpick. How many? <laughs> I can just get my name in there. Can you imagine having your name in there? And then when people come around, go, hey, up, page 58, there I am. Well, you have to, like, back in the day, like, when it first started, like, coming out, maybe in the, the mid-90s, if you had a record, it went in the book. But nowadays, because they make all these wacky ones, you'd be lucky if you got onto the website. To get oh. in the book is, like, 
Whoa, look at that. It, like the book would be so huge if they had every record they ever documented. So now it's only like the ones that are um, worthy of a read. Like well, if someone's yeah. like, most, m- one of the records someone showed me yesterday was most amount of slices of bread looked at in 10 <laughs> seconds. And they, they have a stack of bread like this and they go, all right, three, two, one, go. Yeah. And he just goes, like this, and just like <laughs> unfolds these slices of bread. And that's and in the book. Goes, Time! And that's in the book? And no, it's not in the book. Oh. It's on the website. Right, so you're going you're gonna to run, you're gonna run the marathon dressed as a character, well, a gaming this is character. a video game character, yeah. Okay, have you decided which character it is? No, because like when you run a marathon, uh, what you wear is incredibly important. Yeah. And so I've, 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 what I'm going to do is like hopefully closer to the time when there's a larger audience, I'm going to then turn that into like what I run as, as another way to like boost the charity a bit. Idea, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you uh, like uh, vote with your money and find some way to, to, to document that and be yeah. like, all right uh mario got 50 quid um hopefully it's more than 50 quid yeah, 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 mario yeah. got a thousand uh crash sonic, bandicoot got 500 crash bandicoot's a good shot sonic the hedgehog but i bet there's already been a sonic bet yeah oh yeah well the thing is uh, like they would have to be uh, like the two that i've come up with is uh did you ever hear the god of war yeah yeah he's yeah he look, he's like pale white and he's got um like tattoo, red tattoo things. I think that would be a good one because you wouldn't have a lot of gear on. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. If you're running without a top on, that can cause chafing. So it's like, all right, well, yeah. let's put that in the maybe pile. Yeah. And then the, I think the front runner for me at the moment is, do you know, Solid Snake? Oh, yeah. Metal, Metal Gear Solid. Gear so- think- oh, class, yeah. Did it look good? He's really famous. He's known as a computer game character and all that. But it's like, what's the weather going to be like? Is it going to be raining? Because then I've got too much clothes on. Is it going to be too hot? Because then I've got the uh, the thing on. You've got the eye so patch. Like, you've got one eye as well because you've got the eye patch. Yeah. In so some of them, not all of them. So the eye patch is optional. I'm going to go with the eye patch. You've got to have the eye patch if it's snake. Snake. Uh, yeah, snake. Snake, isn't it? Snake, pl- not Pliskin. Snake. You've said his name. Well, he kind of calls him. Yeah, well, th- that's kind of weird. So, like, in the second one, he he fakes his name and he says, oh, my name is Pliskin. But what that's a reference to is... Um, Escape from... Uh, Kurt, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yes. Yeah, in Escape yeah. from L.A. and Escape yeah. from New York. Have you watched those films? I have. Not in ages. Great. I'll, Remember I'll, that one with the basketball? He's like, yeah. Like that. Well, he draws it. Films. I've met the guy who wrote those films. He's amazing. Yeah. I'd say so, yeah. I yeah. must rewatch them. They're class. Class films. Uh, okay, so so the idea is to run the marathon as a game, uh, in a gaming costume, but you don't you don't know yep. which one yet. So you're going to try and raise money. Now, what do you want people to do? Are you raising money now? Because I think you said it, you'd rather have people subscribe to the YouTube channel. Is that right? Uh, so, well, that's one step, but also spreading it to other people because that's the whole idea is like uh, the audience must be really big and then like donating, absolutely. If you just want to donate and be like, yeah, I, I don't care about your story. I care about the thing though. I, I don't know why they wouldn't do that directly to the charity themselves, but like if whatever, they just want to give the money. I'll, like, I'm not going to like say, no, no, no. Yeah, laser. yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. But the most important thing is getting a huge audience because, like, it's got to be something insanely high. It's got to be like fifth, half, like um, half a million people know is what I think is the amount of people that need to uh, need to be on some platform where I'm able to go. All right, now's the time to donate because uh, the amount of money is two point seven million pounds. So if you have 50 uh, or a uh, half a million people who are aware of what's going on and are, are listening. Um, of those people, how many people will actually donate when asked? Because a lot yeah. of people might be just uh, here to see the freak show. And yeah. fair enough, then, you know, I would do the same thing in a lot of cases and not give, uh, not give the money. Like, you know, yeah. some people care 
um, more, some people care less, but they're still interested. And I do welcome those people who are still just interested and aren't going to donate because they are part, like the larger a social media thing gets, the more it attracts. It's the same as um, yeah. uh, planets in, in the solar system. The larger a planet is, the more gravity it pulls. Yeah, so yeah. even if they're not donating, it still is helping. Yeah. And um, when are you, when are you uh, thinking of doing this, Ian? When are you doing the marathon? Uh, It'll be 22. London 2022. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen next year, do we, to be fair? So. Well, also, I just wouldn't be fit enough. So, so uh, tell us, also, I, won't, I won't be fit enough and I won't be, um, it, it's not long enough for time to raise that amount of money. It would be less, of it, less than half a year. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you building up now is perfect because then you've got all next year to build up, build up, build up, you know what I mean? And then, and then when you go for the fundraising, like you say, then hopefully you, you can get some good numbers coming through. Um, yeah. Uh, so the running interests me. So have you always ran and sort of, do you think this has helped with your, with your, with your cancer? Do you, is it something that you enjoy? Um, not yet. And that's because I, the last time I was running distance was uh, seven years ago and I've actually done the London marathon. Oh, right. And, okay. Yeah. And, uh, seven in those seven years like i was saying earlier uh, i don't know if it was on your podcast or it was just us chatting but like i was yeah. playing rugby and i was playing uh, like uh lifting weights and muscles they um they have two types they have a, a type um type a and type b uh and type one and type two within those same brackets and one is called slow twitch and one is called fast twitch yeah. Fast twitch is for, as you as it, you would guess, it's for getting the muscle to contract really quickly. And what that is for is like jumping high, uh, a big powerful movement. So that's your sprinters, that's a, a yeah. sidestep, um, all, all sorts of stuff like that. And then slow twitch muscles is just being able to keep going, keep going, using the same muscle over and over again for the repetition. So that's cyclists. That's uh, rowers, that's, yeah. you know, any run that's over 800 meters, you're probably using more slow twitch than fast twitch. Not sure or exactly. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you get, you get footballers and uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, sporting athletes would be a mix. There is yeah. definitely a mix. Yeah. But um, my position in, uh, in rugby was a forward. And so yeah, it's a lot more important to be, uh, big and strong than to be um, as fit. You need to be fit, but not nearly as much as the backs. They move around a lot more. Yeah. So I was training my muscles in the opposite way to <laughs> what yeah. they were. Yeah. And then um, I think also, I think my muscles are, uh, whatever my DNA is, I think it wants to be more fast twitch than slow twitch. But I just, I really liked running. I liked running the distances. It was really um, relaxing. Yeah. And then, so now it's like trying to be like, all right, lads, we're, we're back to the running. Come on, come, yeah. come on, we'll cry, you back. Yeah. And uh, that was, um, it's been definitely tricky. And I'm not at the stage where I'm enjoying yeah. my runs, yeah. but they are getting faster. So hopefully in the next, you know, Maybe before Christmas, I'd really like to be back into the groove where I go outside. I'm enjoying every yeah, every yeah. every minute of it. Yeah, I mean, I I run. Uh, you wouldn't guess because I'm quite a big chap. <laughs> but I do. But I don't run far. Uh, I'll probably do three mile up and down over the local woods. And one thing that amazes me about running three miles a good distance. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd rather go three mile up and down in the mud. Sweat my heart out, you know, get home, job done, and just pave the you go along the concrete bit. And I don't really enjoy it. I've been doing it for a while. But what I find is uh, afterwards, I feel great. And it oh, just yeah. changes my mood completely. Uh, do you think that's something that's important for you? Obviously, you know what I mean? Is that something that you enjoy? Uh, so every so often, I do get the, the runners high and a big flood of endorphins, but it's, uh, it's, it's not as common as it used to be. It's almost like my body has a, you've got to go at a certain pace in order to like break into that point where they yeah. release all those uh, 
uh, those chemicals into your head. So I'm not hitting that, but there is a, there's another sort of sense of satisfaction knowing like, uh, going with the whole kind of, do you, do you know David Goggins? Did you ever hear of him? Yeah, yeah. He's a nutcase. So like, <laughs> got like a sort of the David Goggins attitude of like, you didn't want to do that. It was unpleasant, but you went out and you did it because you knew that it was the right thing to do. And so there's then a sort of a, a, a sense of satisfaction afterwards. Not so much like, oh, I'm in such a good mood now. <laughs> But more like, you know, yeah, you did the yeah. right thing. You've, you've earned the right to whatever. Yeah. The only reason I'll do it is so I can drink beer at night. <laughs> but that's, yeah, there you go. That's when you have guilty. the beer and it's like, oh, this is so much better because it was earned. It's like you stole it and it tastes like crime. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, if there's uh, a bit, I always ask my guests to give us a bit of advice. If obviously you've you've been through it quite a bit, and you, you know you, you're a very positive character, if you were to give someone some advice who's maybe going through a bit of bit of crap at the minute, or or maybe feels quite stressed out, what what sort of advice do you think you could give them, Ian? Uh, that there's always silver linings to. A lot of situations are shit and they seem shit and there's nothing better uh, or nothing benefiting, benefiting you from it. But you, you just never know and kind of have faith that your future might have been made better because of what you've gone through. So like all sorts of things like that happen in life where you, there's nothing that seems better. Uh, first girlfriend I ever had, uh, I thought, oh my God, I'm punching so far above my weight. <laughs> Uh, this is like, and we're breaking up now. This is awful. Like I've never, I'm never going to love yeah. anyone like that ever again. And then the next girlfriend comes on. I was like, wait a minute. That first girlfriend was a bitch. <laughs> what the fuck? Like this second girlfriend is one better looking. And two, she's not horrible to me all the time. When she gets things wrong, she apologizes. The first girlfriend I ever had never apologized about anything. And I didn't realize that until I broke up with her. That is a great analogy. Unfortunately, I married my first girlfriend, so <laughs> she better not listen to the podcast. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a joke. Okay, bring a bit of our voice. Right, let's talk favourites. Now, um, first thing is T-shirt, Szechuan. Tell me a little bit about Rick and Morty. Oh, God. I can't even remember how I got introduced to Rick and Morty, but the first, I think I watched the first episode... And it's that scene where um, he comes in, like Rick comes in absolutely shit faced. Do you remember that one? Yeah. And he's just like, oh, "Morty, we gotta, we gotta get out of here." Man. And I, I can't even remember what the full thing. No, I remember the breaking points. For I saw that and I thought, like, "Jesus, this is this is pretty funny." Yeah. And then they, it was the one where they went to um, the. Uh, what's that that old story about the 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 jack uh, jack and the giant beanstalk oh yeah 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 they go up and there's the um uh all the giant people yeah, and then they yeah. have to go down the stairs and they they like they meet this bar they go to this weird bar and there's mr jellybean yeah remember him yeah and then he tries he tries to fucking to rape morty and it, you're just there sitting like Oh my yeah. god, like this show is off the walls. This this kid is like, you know, you don't really think of him as a teenager because of the way he portrays himself, but he's 14 and there's something oh, no, there, yeah. like, you know, yeah. licking his ear and all this. You're like, ah, what the fuck? I know. It's funny. I love the way I love the way when I first watched it. And I was like, oh, it's just a kid. And then all of a sudden something like that happens. You go, Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is so off the walls. And yeah. it's just there is there are no boundaries whatsoever in what they'll take the piss out of and like they take the piss out of themselves and it's, oh, it's just yeah, brilliant yeah, it is it's great a couple of my favorite episodes one's mr me seeks yes yeah. <laughs> mr me seeks uh people won't understand if they've never seen it but who cares uh, but yeah, I love, that, love that episode. And then the pickle. I think Rick. Mr. Meeksick is still my. Uh, is still my. Let me just check. It's, it might still be my YouTube homepage thing. Is Probably it? need to up, update that. Yeah. Uh, and I love pickle Rick as well. Yeah. I'm a pickle. Yeah, it is. Mr. Meeks is still that. Is he? <laughs> yeah. I'm a pickle, Rick. I'm a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> I remember so. like. Uh, 
Dan, have you heard that interview with Dan Harlan where like, like they explain how Pickle Rick happened? No, no. What's he say? Oh, so clever. It's like he, he wanted... The, like he was like, all right, Pickle Rick is probably the stupidest thing we've come up with, but for some reason it just sounds brilliant, so let's do it. <laughs> and then they were like, okay, but we have to be like the reason that Pickle Rick or that Rick makes him into a pickle, which is the stupidest thing ever. It has to be for like the most profound reason possible. <laughs> and then we have to go down into that avenue and it was like, okay, Rick, but why did you make yourself into a pickle? And it's like goes into the the deep emotional issues that he has with his family and all this. It's like, <laughs> That's it. They really, really, they really, doing, lads. They, really th- they really think through the episodes, don't they? I mean, you know, they're, oh, yeah. they're really, and some of them are quite political and they're proper. Have a good dig, and I do, I do like that about it. Um, yeah. Now, uh, what else have you got? A favourite that obviously, you, apart from uh, good old Rick and Morty, that you've thought about that um, people can access or see, maybe a film, TV, or music. Is there anything you can think of? Uh, in terms of music, without doubt, the Chemical Brothers. I oh, ge- yeah. every every single one of their albums has excellent songs on it. Every single one of their albums is brilliant. Uh, their performances live are incredible uh, they, and like just like it, literally when I'm having a bad day sometimes I just put the music on and it really does just get me out of that place like they're, they're so yeah. consistent every single album is good I don't know any artists that don't have like oh, that album they're not great yeah yeah uh, like and they've got like 10 and every single one of them is brilliant yeah, that's a good so, shout. I haven't listened to them for ages, but I'm, I've just wrote, wrote that down now because I'm going to get some of that on the uh, on the iPod and uh, listen to that. Definitely good yeah, shout. Yeah, the last the last two albums are, are like their latest two albums are quite good. It's not their best work, but it still is really good. Yeah, so, no, yeah, I'll have, I'll I couldn't have a, push them hard enough. I'll have, I'll have a listen to that. Um, and anything else? Another favorite, or is that? Oh, let's see what are, what are the series that I'm. Oh, I'm watching uh, the Man in the High Castle on. Uh, oh, is that any good? Yes, yes, very much so. The um, it's it. This is gonna make me sound like a creep, but uh, <laughs> the guy who play there's an American guy who plays the American uh, Nazi leader, and he's oh. not really like a big. <sighs> believer in the nazi philosophy but he's just sort of he appreciates the the order that they put on the world so that's so seems to be his motive i think for I know. Why he, yeah um i know his name is it you're on about rufus sewell or, yeah 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 he's a good actor he's been around a long time yeah he's very good yeah he's excellent in that one with um the illusionist Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he's terrific in that. I think that was the first thing I seen him in. But he's 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 sort of like an anti-hero in a way in this because there's a there's a lot of his character that's very likable. But I mean, he's the head Nazi of uh, the American Reich, so it's like <laughs> work that one out. <laughs> mm, yeah, but at the same time, we're looking at me. He he does. I don't. I'm trying to say some things that he does. That's not going to be plot giveaways. Like oh. he's not a, a, yeah, he's not a like a a good guy who's in this position of power so that he can change the the way the Nazis are going. But it's just like he doesn't seem to hate people. He like at several yeah. times it's like he could have someone killed or have someone destroyed, and he just he doesn't. Yeah. Every so he'll kill someone every so often, but it's like that seemed like he kind yeah. of had to, yeah. otherwise, yeah. like yeah. lawless would have happened. Yeah, but yeah, he's a bit like um, who's the guy in Game of Thrones who's played by uh, Charles Dance and um, yeah, yeah, the uh, the dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the, not Theo, but uh, oh god, I can't believe I can't remember his name. Well, I can't remember what his the- name. And now you're getting me to Google it because I can't remember it. It's annoying me. Head, head Lannister, Tywin, Tywin Lannister. Oh no, that's the that's the uh, dwarf, isn't it? No, that's Tyrion. Oh, Tyrion. Ah, right. Sorry, not dwarf. Mini person. Sorry, politically incorrect there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great actor. 
peaked uh, drink club. Anyway, uh, but yes, I know exactly what you mean. I think that's the thing with all these characters in TV, even if they're complete bastards. I, I remember Breaking Bad. You ever watched Breaking Bad? Yeah, brilliant show. Yeah, and Walter White was a bastard, really. But because yes. you understood why he was doing it, you, you almost felt sorry for him, even though, you know what I mean? You, you, you rooted yeah, you're rooting for, for him. him. Yeah, and I think if you can find that humanity in any of these characters, then uh, that's what makes you watch it, I suppose. Yeah, same reason with Thanos, where it's like he's a much better character because it was like, ha I'm going to kill... Like, in the comics, he's quite boring. It's... Uh, uh, he's he, he's in love with death who is like a female representation but it is like she is a character and she is death and so he's like ah i will prove myself to you like he, he's basically just the biggest beta male in the world he just happens to be ripped to bits <laughs> i know he's like i will show you uh how great i am by killing half the population of everywhere yeah yeah but there's a reason beyond it i felt quite sorry when he when he died Oh, God, that's a spoiler. Uh, don't oh. listen to that bit. For if you're into Marvel and you haven't seen it there, well, you're only 1% of the population anyway, because everyone oh, else has seen it. So, the yeah, bad yeah. guy doesn't win in the superhero yeah, film. Well, true. Shock, yeah. horror. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, yeah, so thanks for that. Right, now, if people uh, want to get onto your channel and subscribe, what, what's the handles? Have you got Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, any of that? What's, what's that? Yeah, so uh, I'm really just using two. Hopefully, I'll expand okay. to it more later on. I've been really trying to work on doing that. But um, so the the ones that are uh, the most important are the Facebook one, and that is if you go to cancer, not cancer. So little clever play on words there with can and can't. Uh, I didn't realize yeah. when I'd be telling someone, yeah, go to cancer, not cancer, that they might be going like, wait, what? You're really happy I'm with that, you, you lot. <laughs> ah, well, I thought, well, I didn't come up with a credit where it's due. It was one of my friends who suggested it. I was just like, yeah, that's good. I'll take that. Yeah. I did come up with Captain America cancer, though, which I quite like. But, <laughs> but the weird thing is, I came up with that, and then four days later, Chadwick Boseman died of cancer. Yeah. And it's like, do I do I keep using that name or should I stop? Is it disrespectful to stop or is it disrespectful to keep going? If it's the right reason, then you keep going with it. You know what I mean? You know, if it's for the right reason, which it is. So, yeah. Yeah, but it's the internet I'm putting this out to. So there's always going to be people like, you're a, you're a, you're a. Fuck them. Right. So it's cancer. So it's can't, sir. Yeah, with. cancer, not can't, sir. Right. Cancer, and not can't, the, uh, sir. But what yeah. I'll do is I'll put a link to that anyway on everything when we, when we put the podcast out. And what was your other handle? You're in uh, YouTube handle, sorry. Yeah, the YouTube one is, uh, so my uh, a nickname of mine is Liam. And so I just use Liam TW, uh, it's just initials for... Uh, all sorts of different things. And so if you just type in Liam TW and then uh, there's a few Liam TWs at the moment. So if you add an extra word where it's just like gaming, uh, marathon, cancer, anything to do with what you'd expect from what yeah. I'm talking about, then I come up straight away. I, okay. I push right to the top. So okay. I, it'll, like, I, I'm still at early days. I think I only have five uh, or 400 people who... Um, follow me. I reckon you probably have to get a lot more until we'll, we'll get that up. In. We'll get that up. We'll get it up one way or another. We'll get it up. Um, <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah, great That's stuff. The plan. Now, I always ask my guests uh, if they've got like a little story or they've got something they want to say at the end, just something poignant before we finish the interview. No, that's that's really just it. Like, uh, every, anytime you guys. Uh, anyone who would be following or interested in following, the most important thing is definitely to spread it out. And what I found the easiest way to spread it out is like, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a Facebook user, you can shed it on, share it onto your page. Um, but I think something that is more beneficial I've found is uh, when you attract other people's attention to through comments. Like let's say you see someone who is a, uh, a runner and they have um, 
musculosclerosis or something like that. It's something bad that they shouldn't be running with, but they're, mm. they're going out and getting it, uh, getting it done anyway. And if you, someone who is not me, so it's not like self-promotion, go, hey, this guy's doing something similar yeah. to yourself. Maybe you should get in contact. That person might get in contact with me. They might not. But people who follow their page might then become yeah. interested in what I'm doing. And it's like uh, the way, you know, the way film works, the way a lot of things work is people often forget that if a comedian suggests another comedian, that comedian doesn't lose people who follow that comedian. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just the other person gains. Yeah, and then yeah. the uh, attention works like that. People often yeah. don't lose um like it's not like I'm gonna take their yeah, yeah. followers from I them. Follow it's just that if they're interested in that, they might be yeah. interested in this. It has a ripple ripple um following, doesn't it? That's the thing. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get people to ripple to following, do. ripple effect. <laughs> you were just cutting off the middleman. <laughs> well, look, uh, I, I think the key is for you is just just keep putting yourself out there, especially on YouTube, because you, you've got that you know you've got that charisma. Keep keep putting the videos on YouTube, and I think naturally you'll you'll gain a following. Um, and like I say, you know, I'll push as much as I can, as you know. But I think as you get through next year, especially with the training, put the training on YouTube because I think people are always interested in that. Are you doing it? To see how to see how that goes. So yeah, that's great stuff. Well, look, thanks ever so much uh, for coming on today. I've really enjoyed it. Hope you hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely excellent stuff absolutely and what i'd say is next year when you sort of get once you're getting into the training that will you come back on the show and tell us how you're getting on absolutely absolutely and absolutely <laughs> very good very good ian i still got it man i still yeah, got it still got it <laughs> well look you've still got a bit air on top so until it goes like that <laughs> <you're all> right. <laughs> right okay so look make sure you take care look after yourself and uh, thanks so much and we will speak again uh, sometime Absolutely. next year okay take care god bless yeah definitely so that's it massive thanks again to ian ward lovely lovely chap uh, so happy you joined me today and also for you to you for you to you to you to me for listening make sure you follow the podcast because up over the month over the next few months there are some extraordinary interviews um and the podcast will be streaming all on the usual platforms including itunes and spotify so please leave a rating on there and subscribe it is important uh to keep up to date follow facebook which is my way of thinking podcast and also twitter which is my way of thinking that g and a and a three instead Damn you, Twitter, for that. Uh, every week, I also put the whole conversation on YouTube as well. So it's all on there if you want to see my beautiful face. Um, and that, if you put more Way of Thinking podcast, that will come up there as well. And finally, if you do want to get in touch or you think you may be a great guest or know someone who may be a great guest, then email me. You can email me on podcast at aol.com. So pretty straightforward. Um, and also contact me anytime if you think you've got any uh, brilliant stories to tell or you want to know more about the show, by all means, get in touch. Okay, thanks ever so much for listening in today. Take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs>